If you've ever tried to cook a brisket, you've probably seen a lot of recipes that recommend you take the brisket to 203 degrees internal. That's the temperature, or so they say, that the internal connective tissues break down and the brisket gets really tender. So I'll be honest with you guys, every time I take a brisket up to 203 degrees internal, it kind of has a pot roasty type dry flavor and it falls apart a little bit too easily. So are we being lied to? Should we actually be finishing our briskets at a lower temperature than 203 degrees? I kind of think so. So in this video, I'm going to make the argument that the best temperature to finish a brisket is 190 degrees Fahrenheit with one important extra step that I'll get into later in the video. And I'm going to back up this conclusion with an experiment. I'm Steve Gao and this is Smoke Trails Barbecue. Nerd Dad Science Edition. Nerd Dad Science. Let's get smoking with science. Now, before I get into the experiment, there's a few things you need to know about brisket. Brisket is made up of basically three different things. There's muscle tissue, there's fat, fat is flavor, and there's connective tissue, also known as collagen. Now the reason brisket is such a tough cut of meat is because this collagen here is super firm and elastic and it holds the muscle tissues together really tightly. So let's draw our brisket here. We'll just draw a nice little brisket. We'll pretend this is a, a raw brisket. And in order to make this brisket tender, we need to render down that collagen, that connective tissue, so that it converts into a substance called gelatin, which you'll be familiar with because if you've ever had jello before, you're familiar with gelatin. It's what makes jello really soft and tender and jiggly. Now this collagen is in a structure that's kind of like a honeycomb. So my art skills are really being strained right now. Let's say this is our collagen structure. So that's our collagen. And this is, this is like a microscopic view or a zoomed up view of the brisket. You are currently facing perpendicular to um, a, uh, a strand of, of muscle fiber and collagen. This collagen in between it, in bet between this uh, tight connective tissue structure of collagen, we have the individual uh, muscle fibers. So there's muscle fibers in between that collagen. Now, if you want to see what it looks like in real life, here's a cooked piece of brisket. And you can see that this is in the point muscle. It is, it's very visible. You can see that as I stretch this apart, you can see that it's a honeycomb structure and there's those little muscle fibers that are in between that honeycomb structure. So as I poke that out, you can see all those white little fibers in between the muscle fibers. That is the connective tissue, that's the collagen. What we need to do in order to cook this brisket so that it's nice and tender is, is break down that collagen so that it converts into gelatin. So that when we pull it apart, it pulls apart nice and easily and it's not super tough like an uncooked brisket would be. So the way that we break down the collagen is we increase the temperature. At a temperature of around 160 degrees to all the way up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, the connective tissue really starts to render down and convert into gelatin. So it starts to lose its elasticity. It starts to become a lot more stretchy. It might render out completely in some areas of the brisket. And it generally just gives the muscle fibers a lot more degrees of movement uh, so that they can be stretched or pulled apart much more easily. We're basically unlocking the muscle fibers as we increase the temperature. So why don't we just go to a super high temperature up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so that we can render all of that connective tissue like most brisket recipes recommend. Well, the reason is because when we go up all the way to 203 degrees Fahrenheit, these muscle fibers, they start to really tighten up. They they really start to tighten up and they squeeze all of their moisture out. So all this moisture is coming out of the brisket, it's squeezing out, it's either evaporating or it's just straight up dripping into your smoker and into uh, the drip collector tray or your drip collector uh, pot. And you're losing that moisture and it's not um, getting into the final product and it's not getting into your mouth most importantly. So. We don't wanna go all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit because at that temperature, the muscle fibers are squeezing out a ton of moisture. It's turning into that pot roasty, dry, bland, flavorless uh, type of texture. 
Uh, even though we're getting nice rendering of the collagen, which is also important for cooking the brisket, um, it's detrimental to the, the muscle fibers. So our job as pit masters is to find a way to render all of this connective tissue surrounding the muscle fibers, but we don't want to overcook those muscle fibers so that they squeeze out all of their moisture and it tastes like a dry pot roast. So how do we do that? Well, for starters, we need to understand that the connective tissue doesn't just magically break down at a temperature of 203 degrees Fahrenheit internal. The breakdown is also a function of time as well as temperature. So it's important to note that time is in this equation as well. For example, at 160 degrees internal, the collagen might take 20 plus hours to fully break down so that it's nice and tender, which Sounds pretty crazy, but you could actually do it in a sous vide machine if you have one. On the other hand of the spectrum, at 203 degrees Fahrenheit internal, that collagen breaks down extremely quickly in a matter of just minutes in some cases, which is why most recipes recommend it as the foolproof temperature to get a tender brisket. Now, between those two temperature extremes, uh, the time it takes to render the collagen at certain temperatures decreases as the temperature increases. Let's say we've got temp here in Fahrenheit and we got time on the bottom. And then on the bottom axis, we have, let's say 20 hours. At 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a very low temperature, it takes, let's say 20 hours to fully render that collagen. But at 170, it might only take, let's say 18 hours of that temperature. And then 180, let's say it takes around maybe 10 hours at that temperature at 180 to uh, get a nice and tender brisket with all that collagen rendered. At 190, it might only take two hours. And then at 203 degrees Fahrenheit, it could be instantly as soon as the brisket reaches 203, or it could take maybe 30 minutes at that temperature to render that collagen. So then what we get is kind of uh, a line here. I'm actually gonna say, at 180, maybe let's say it takes six hours, just to be a little bit more realistic. And then we have sort of a, a graph here, and it goes up kind of exponentially at the end. So we have this graph, uh, and if we're looking at it, it makes sense to finish our brisket at 203 degrees Fahrenheit because we know that there's little room for error. We know if we hit 203, we probably will fully render that collagen. But if we go down the chart, let's say we finish it at 180, uh, we might need to hold it at 180 um, at, for six hours. So a longer time to get the same results as if we hit 203 instantly or held it at 203 for maybe 30 minutes. Uh, and then a more realistic temperature we can look at is 190 right here. It might only take two hours held at 190 to fully render that collagen as much as uh, hitting 203 degrees Fahrenheit um, would render that collagen. So that leads into my theory. My theory is that if I hit 190 degrees internal on my brisket and hold it there for two hours, I'll have the same results and the same breakdown and rendering of the connective tissue as if I went all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. Plus, while I'm doing this, I'll maintain the moisture, I'll maintain a better mouthfeel, more flavor in the meat, because I finished at 190 degrees Fahrenheit instead of taking it all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit, where I squeezed out a lot of that moisture and gave the brisket that pot roasty, flavorless, bland taste. So now, in order to test this theory, I will need a brisket. For this experiment, I'm using a Brant Lake Wagyu brisket that I've split in half down the middle. The reason I'm splitting it instead of using two briskets is because there's a lot of variance between briskets, even if they're from the same grade, from the same ranch, but there's not a lot of variance between two halves of the same brisket. I'm seasoning each side of the brisket with 50-50 salt and pepper, and I'm using some Lowry's seasoning salt because well, I just want to experiment with it because it's really popular right now and I wanna see if I wanna use it on my briskets in the future. In any event, the rub I'm using is irrelevant to this video. I'm starting my Oklahoma Joe's offset smoker with a basket of coconut charcoal and I'm using my grill gun to get the fire started. If you guys are looking for a super fast and easy way to light your firebox without messing around with a chimney, the grill gun is the way to go. You can find a link for it in the description section below and get a discount with code STBBQ on checkout. 
Now for my cooking chamber setup, I have a large water pan to help control temperatures, and I'm putting both points towards the firebox with my Inkbird probe measuring the internal and ambient temperatures, and I'm also inserting a meter remote probe into each point muscle of each side of the brisket as a backup, and also so I can monitor my temperatures and graph them on my phone easily, uh, because uh, as a new dad, I have to frequently go away from my smoker and do dad stuff. So it's really helpful to uh, be able to see that uh, on, on your phone and know when you need to add a new split. If you guys are repeat viewers, you'll know that I love the meter. I think it's the best thing uh, that you can possibly do to become a better um, pit master uh, at fire management on an offset while still having free time to do errands around the house, especially if you're a parent, it's very important because you just can't sit by an offset smoker all day. If you guys wanna pick up a meter remote probe, I'll leave a link in the description section below. Now throughout the cook, I did my normal routine for cooking briskets. I spritzed the dry edges of the briskets every hour or so. I flipped them around and protected the edges with foil uh, just to make sure I didn't get any crispy edges and to make sure the bark got rendered on all sides. And I ran a fire between 250 degrees and 275 degrees for this cook, although I did have some dips lower than that and some spikes that went up to around 300 because again, I was uh, tending to my own baby and not babysitting uh, the smoker all day. When my internal temps hit 170 and the bark was where I wanted it, I removed the briskets from the smoker and wrapped them both in tallow soaked butcher paper. I then put both briskets in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit uh, because my oven usually translates to around 275 degrees Fahrenheit uh, in the pan that I put my briskets in. So I set it a bit higher at 300 degrees. And I did that until one of them hit 190 degrees internal. After that, I put the 190 degree internal brisket into my Masterbuilt electric smoker and I held it at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, the brisket in the oven hit 203 internal very quickly and passed all my finishing checks. So I took it out and I rested it on the counter for two hours. And back to the 190 degree internal brisket, after two hours of being held at 190, the other brisket passed all my finishing checks and I removed it to rest on the counter as well. And then I sliced into each one of the briskets and I got ready for the taste test. Okay, starting with the brisket that I finished at 203 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm gonna start with a piece from the flat. So first impressions, it's uh, it's a little bit tough. Usually my uh, flat flats are uh, a lot more flexible than this. So this tells me it maybe could have used a little bit more time, uh, even at that 203 degrees Fahrenheit. The fat is actually really well rendered. You can see how you can squish it like that. It doesn't peel off. That means it's rendered, so that's a good sign. Appearance wise, it looks pretty good. I'm just gonna tear it apart here. So it comes apart really easily, which usually is an indication that um, it's, it's cooked really well, or it can even be an indication that it's overcooked. Despite this not being as bendy as usual, maybe it's because I cut it a bit thicker, this is probably the perfect consistency of brisket. So let's go for taste now. Mmm, oh man. As an aside, I can really taste the Lowry's seasoning. It's a lot saltier. I'm getting a lot more uh, garlic and onion flavors. That's interesting. I might use that um, in the future. It's good. You can taste the dryness. You can taste that there's been a lot of moisture squeezed out of the meat. You can see that the fat is coating it well, but what we're concerned about here is the muscle fibers. At 203 degrees Fahrenheit, you're squeezing out a lot more moisture from those muscle fibers. That is kind of the real thing we're looking at here is uh, whether 203 degrees Fahrenheit dries out the brisket a little bit more than finishing at 190 and holding it there. So here is how the muscle fibers look, and we'll be able to compare that when I try the other brisket. All right, now let's try a piece of the point muscle. Mmm, it's got a little bit of pull, which is good, a little bit of elasticity. That's how I like my brisket. This point muscle is really good. I'm not really picking up any dryness because there's so much fat in the point that it kind of masks any dryness that the brisket would have had. But let's do a pull test, you can see, how it's a little bit elastic. It's not just pulling right apart, but you can easily pull it apart if you pull harder. Mmm, that's really good. I'm gonna try one more piece of the flat 
on the drier side, just for comparison. So we'll pull this apart. A little bit tough, but it's coming apart okay. A little bit drier. That's typical for the flat. And the reason I'm spending so much time on the flat is because my theory is that when I taste test the other brisket, the flat is where it's really going to make a big difference because um, at 190, I'm expecting it to hold more moisture and I'm expecting this to be a little bit drier than the next one, but we'll see if that's true. Okay. It is a bit dry. Overall, amazing tasting brisket. Um, I think it's because the Lowry's salt, um, the seasoning salt, it's really finely powdered and that hits the tongue um, and gives you a perception of, of way more saltiness as opposed to just having kosher salt, which are large granules of salt. So I think that's the main reason that I like the Lowry's, but there's also some other flavor stuff going on. So it's a good experiment and I think I, I might use that stuff in the future. I'm gonna take one more, one more taste test here. Very tip of the flat, pretty dry, but still good, very salty. I think that's enough for this one. Let's move on to the brisket that I finished at 190 degrees Fahrenheit and that I held at that temperature for two hours. Okay, now this is the brisket that I finished at 190 and I held it there for two hours. So will this brisket be better? Will it hold more moisture? Will it just taste better in general? Let's find out. Okay, here is a piece of the flat. So first impressions, it feels a little bit tight, but not too bad. Um, the bark, looks, um, again, it's fully rendered, so no issues there. That looks good. Uh, it looks about the same as the other one. I can't quite tell. You guys tell me if it looks a little bit different, but I'll do a pull test here. So it's pulling apart a little bit harder than the one that I finished at 205, but the consistency is pretty much the same. Let's take a taste. Mm-hmm, okay. There's more resistance on the teeth. It just feels more, feels more meaty and not as pot roasty, if that makes sense. Yeah, there's just generally more resistance. It's not tough, but it, it's, it brings to mind more the consistency of like a really tender tenderloin steak as opposed to like a, a pot roast that just falls apart in your mouth. It's more like you're actually biting into a piece of beef, even though it is still very tender. You gotta take a piece of the, the driest part here. That's good. Still pulls apart really easily. Still really tender. Now let's try a piece of the point muscle here. Point muscle impressions, just like the one I finished at 203. It's a little bit springy, but if I, if I pull harder, I can pull it apart quite easily. Give this a taste. Mmm, it's really tender, but it's not fall apart, which is a good thing. I'm gonna cut off some of this fat. Dip it in some of this tallow. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that's good. Try another piece of this point muscle here. That's really good. All right guys, time for some conclusions. I've eaten a ton of brisket now, I can't eat any more, but I have some conclusions in my mind and it's, it's a pretty clear distinction in my mind. What I would say, first point, there is a difference when you finish your brisket at 203 degrees Fahrenheit versus 190 degrees Fahrenheit by holding it at that temperature for two hours as opposed to going all the way up to 203. The difference is that when you go up to 203, the brisket is a lot more pot roasty. It has that fall apart texture, it crumbles. It just tastes like an overcooked big piece of meat that's been slow cooked for a long time. That doesn't mean it's bad. That doesn't mean it's dry. It's still very juicy, still very nice. Uh, I still enjoy those briskets. And some people might actually prefer that type of brisket because it has that feeling of falling apart in your mouth. And that's like a really uh, luxurious feeling uh, for people that don't eat a ton of brisket. What I would say is that for the brisket connoisseurs out there, I think finishing at 190 is a superior way of um, increasing the flavor profile of the brisket. The 190 brisket that I held for two hours at 190 to finish it, it has a little bit more resistance. It's not fall apart, but it's also really tender. I couldn't really tell if it retained more moisture or anything like that, but it just had a different consistency. It's like the distinction between a rare steak or a medium rare steak and a medium well steak. They have different um, mouthfeels and consistencies. And I think it's the same thing here. When you finish a brisket at 190, it's gonna taste different than when you finish it at 203. I do like finishing my briskets at 190 after doing this test. I think I'm going to experiment with it more and probably uh, continue to finish my briskets at 190 by holding them for two hours 
um, at that temperature. So thanks so much guys. If you are interested in joining my Patreon community, we're building a really small exclusive community where we're all committed to getting better at barbecue. If you wanna chat about this episode or brisket or anything barbecue related, consider joining. I'll put it in the description section below. You'll also get access to um, my videos um, a week earlier in, in a lot of cases or, or at least a few days earlier. So you can watch those before they come out to the, uh, the general public. And I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for supporting me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. It's probably gonna be another brisket video.